Welcome to the historic Zion Baptist Church. On this day, we will have the unveiling of our street toppers naming signs, Zion Baptist Square, and the Columbia Historic Black Business District, 800 to 1100 Street, Washington Street, East to West Dedication Service. The scripture says that this is the Lord's doing and it is marvelous in our eyes. This is the day the Lord has made and we will be glad in it. At this particular time, we're going to invite Reverend Dr. Cynthia Walters forth for our scripture reading. And following the scripture reading, we will have a prayer by Deacon Isaac Washington we ask that you will come in that order. Good afternoon. Our scripture comes from Joshua 4, verses 1 through 8. The 12 memorial stones. When the whole nation had finished crossing the Jordan, the Lord said to Joshua, choose 12 men from among the people, one from each tribe, and tell them to take up 12 stones from the middle of the Jordan, from right where the priests are standing, and carry them over with you, and put them down at the place where you stay tonight. So Joshua called together the 12 men he had appointed from the Israelites, one from each tribe, and said to them, go over before the ark of the Lord your God into the middle of the Jordan. Each of you is to take up a stone on his shoulder according to the number of the tribes of the Israelites to serve as a sign among you. In the future, when your children ask you, what do these stones mean? Tell them that the floor of the Jordan was cut off before the Ark of the Covenant of the Lord. When it crossed the Jordan, the waters of the Jordan were cut off. These stones are to be a memorial to the people of Israel forever. Verse 8. So the Israelites did as Joshua commanded them. They took 12 stones from the middle of the Jordan, according to the number of the tribes of the Israelites, as the Lord had told Joshua, and they carried them over with them to their camp, where they put them down. Again, Joshua 4, verses 1 through 8, the NIV translation. Amen. Amen. In the absence of Deacon Washington, I'm going to ask to give the prayer. Let us pray. Father God, we again thank you for allowing us to see a day that we've never seen before. Lord, we still thank you for the blood that's running and still warm in our veins. Yeah. We thank you, God, for this church, Lord, this church that you established a long time ago. Yeah. We pray, God, that we have met up to your standards, Lord. We realize, Lord, there was a whole lot more work to do. But, Lord, we know that you said in your word that you will never leave us, nor will you forsake us, Lord. We ask you right now to give us the strength, Lord, to go on and do what you would have us to do. We ask you right now to bless this service, Lord. Bless this honorable place, Lord. Yes. We ask you, Lord, that you just let us know why we do what we do, Lord. And that's to draw someone just a little closer to you, Lord. We thank you, Lord, for how you blessed us and how you're going to bless us. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. We thank you for the suitable prayer and certainly the suitable scripture. At 
this time we're going to have the occasion by Mr. John Dixon as he comes. Would you give him a hand as he comes? Greetings to all on this blessed Lord's Day. Today is a day of commemoration. Today is a day of humble gratitude. And today is a day of hope. Today we commemorate the honorary naming of the intersection of Gadsden Street and Washington Street as Zion Baptist Church Square. And the honorary naming of the 800 through 1100 blocks of Washington Street as Columbia's historic black business district. The commemoration of these locations speaks volumes in the past, present, and future of the history of this city. To some, these locations may simply be latitudinal and longitudinal points of placement on a city map. But to us, these locations mean so much more. Today, we pay homage to the men, women, and children, those who have joined the ancestors and those still living, who live to see that these locations were at the very heartbeat of black livelihood in the city of Columbia. Within this small corridor of hope, Black people found salvation, a reasonably safe sanctuary, and opportunities to be encouraged by each other to push on toward equality. Their navigation through arduous challenges such as segregation and inequality did not break them. They persevered, and because of what they did, we are, and we bear the promise of a brighter future for those to come. So it is today, with humble gratitude to the Honorable Mayor Daniel J. Rickenman, City Councilwoman Tina N. Herbert, along with other council members and staff, we extend a heartfelt thank you. Your time attention, and swift action in making today a reality is deeply appreciated. Finally, it is a day of hope. Whenever someone looks up to read these wonderful sign talkers over the street signs, and they haven't the faintest clue what the Zion Baptist Church Square or the historic black business district is all about. It is our hope that they will do further research and discover the real history of Columbia. For informed people are people of progress. Thank you. Well, beloved, at this time we will receive remarks in the following order. Columbia City Mayor, the Honorable uh, Daniel Rickman, and Columbia City Councilwoman, the Honorable Tina Herbert. Following, we will hear from the state NAACP uh, Conference President, Ms. Brenda Murphy, and then the Columbia Branch NAACP, Ms. Ovita Glover. We ask that you come in that order. Give uh, Mayor a hand as he comes. What a great day, Zion. Welcome. Thank you all for, for all being here today. Reverend, thank you for all your support and direction and counseling. Um, Ms. Herbert is not here today. She had an unfortunate emergency, family emergency. But Tyler Bailey, our new elected at-large member, will speak on her behalf and on behalf of the other members of city council. Uh, and I hope you'll keep her in your prayers. You know, we got here today by an interesting path. 
some of y'all were in here when we had we had a little controversial uh, uh, role to get here. But you know what came out of that? What came out of that is everything happens for a reason. My mother used to tell me it's never too late to make something right. Well, guess what? Today something's right. And something's going to happen today. And what's so special about it is that we continue to celebrate the history. And, and as we all learn, Columbia played a, just an incredible role through, through the history of, of the U.S. The United States of America, Columbia was a center. South Carolina was a center, but Columbia especially. Last Sunday, I had the opportunity to be at the intersection of Main Street at the exhibit at the Columbia Museum. I heard a lecture on the Garrett family which was extremely interesting to hear about a family and actually got to see their house at um, 12, I think it's 12, 12, 1214 in Lady Street. Uh, went by there to see it. It's still standing. How do we, how do we take that house and, and, and save it and return it and make it a focal point because there's an incredible story there. But I tell you, the highlight of the whole day was I was in the exhibit walking around with Dr. Donaldson and we met a gentleman, Mr. Whaley. Mr. Whaley started telling stories and started pointing in the pictures of where he had been. If it was Assembly Street Market, if it was at the cafes, it, where his mom, who graduated from Booker, Washington in 1933, and he graduated in 1965, he still has her diplomas. He still has all of her things from that era. And to listen to the stories about Columbia from someone who experienced them, for me, was incredible. And you have to understand, my family didn't move to the U.S. till 1967. So I have a whole, I'm learning every day about the history in Columbia. But I can tell you, with us coming together as a community, that history will never be forgotten. It will continue to be celebrated. And I think it's going to open up a lot more opportunities as, as we continue to move forward with the Booker Washington Center that's going to be built. That's going to help us be part of the Civil Rights Trail. And if you've been to Montgomery, Alabama, and you've experienced it, you understand that Columbia has just as much history, if not more. Because if we be quite honest, we were first in a lot, of, a lot of movements, and we didn't get the credit for it. But that's okay. We're going to put it in there as an asset. That is an asset because we are taking our history, celebrating it, and continuing to move forward as we grow our community together. And I want to thank y'all for the opportunity of being here today. I'm excited about the unveiling as we continue to celebrate. And hopefully this will be the first of many as we continue to grow our community together. And I think it was best said earlier by Mr. Dixon. If you want, if you want to know the history, you need to be informed. Take the time. Take the time to learn our history because it's important for all of us. Thank you. Reverend Dr. M. Andrew Davis, Zion Baptist Church, our esteemed mayor and congregants. I'm sorry to disappoint you all, I'm not the honor of Tina Perkins. <laughs> <laughs> but Zion Baptist Church has played a critical role in molding the social fabric of this community. And my first story involved with Zion Baptist Church goes back to a cold morning on January 17, 2020, which many of y'all probably remember was a it was the first, I believe, rally that Zion Baptist Church had with the march from here to the State House. And I was 10 years old at that time. It was Martin Luther King Day. It was a cold morning. My dad woke me and my siblings up and said that we're going to a march for the Confederate flag to come down off the State House. So that's just an example of the history that this church has and the work that y'all have done in molding and shaping our community, which we are appreciative of with the city of Columbia. And many cities throughout the, the country had black business districts. They referred to as Black Wall Streets. We always heard of Tulsa, Oklahoma, but this here, too, was also a Black Wall Street. During several Black History Month events this February, it was commonly asked if you knew about Black Wall Street in Columbia. And every time, maybe two or three people would say they knew. And today, with this naming of uh, Zion Baptist Square, along with the historical black Columbia business district, 
we are paying tribute to make sure our story is further told. Historic black business districts will never rise to prominence if we all don't work together. We need Zion Baptist Church, the City of Columbia, journalists, creatives, and everybody to join arm in arm in telling our history. So let's work together to make this historic destination not just for people in Columbia, but throughout this country. And I also want to make sure that I uh, thank Councilwoman Herber for her leadership and quick swift action to make sure that we're ready to recognize Zion Baptist Church and the Columbia Black Business District during Black History Month and following up on first Sunday in March with this uh, great event. Thank you. Good afternoon. Yes, yes, what a great day it is. What a great day it is. I am so happy to be a part of this today and to say to you, I lived it also. I um, was raised in Columbia, South Carolina, and um, you heard the comment just a few minutes ago that this was known as the Black Wall uh, Street area, Columbia. The areas known as the Black, Columbia Black Wall Street was the 1000 block to the 1100 block of Washington Street, from Assembly Street to Gadsden Street. Those were, that, those were, that was the area, basically, that most of the local businesses, the black businesses that served our communities were located. Uh, I remember the Capitol Theater. Some of you may remember. Uh, I'm just going to tell my age. <laughs> uh, you know, the beauty shop that was there, a uh, barber shop and beauty shop, uh, the law offices of Matthew Perry and Lincoln Jenkins, the Lilywood barber shop, the Green Leaf Restaurant, the, the Hemp Hill Pride Dentistry, who's known mostly for lawyering nowadays, um, and also the funeral homes. They were here as well. This was our hub the hub of our business. It was where the first grocery store that served us as black people, I know some of you probably remember the Wind dixie right there on the corner of Washington and Assembly Street. It brings back fun memories to think about all our history here. We must not forget it. It was here that it all started and the place that served us doing segregation uh, up until the 1970s, not too long ago. Time has passed and a lot has happened and we saw the changes. Uh, many of those businesses moved out. But most importantly, here stands Zion Baptist Church, still standing. And I'll tell you, as, when, as a young person, we all always called it Big Zion. This was Big Zion, the church that we visited um, and heard about its history. Many, many famous individuals walked through these, uh, these halls. Uh, they were here to fight for our justice, and they were here to visit, many of them. And that still continues today. And I just want to say thank you, Dr. Davis, Reverend Dr. Davis, the officers of this great church, the members of this great church, for being what you are and being the place that we can continue the journey for justice for all. Again, thank you, thank you, thank you. And I just want to say, I do remember Reverend Gil Goforth and his messages, and you know, I go way back.
offer smiles of congratulations to Dr. Davis and of course the congregation because without you what? No Dr. Davis and no what? Continuously moving forward with the church. But the congratulation is on the installation of these significant markets that we will review shortly. They serve as a reminder of the rich history of this church and the enduring spirit of the historic African American business district, which must never be forgotten. Zion, Big Zion as they used to call it, holds a significant, specific, and historically important place as defined by its remarkable legacy. The Columbia, South Carolina branch of the NAACP was established just one year, one year after the grand, this grand sanctuary was constructed. In many ways, our path, that's Zion, Columbia branch, and the NAACP, have evolved side by side. Zion Baptist Church has consistently opened its doors to the NAACP and numerous other community organizations. It has been a venue for mass meetings, demonstrations, church services, notable speakers, musical performances, prayer vigils, vigils and King David Dunn. None of these impactful programs and events would have been possible without the support of Zion Baptist Church for your generosity and continuous firm commitment to the advancement of colored people and all people, we salute you. May these markers serve as reminders of the courageous lessons of the past. May they inspire and guide us as we continue the fight for freedom and justice for all in our time. Let us remember that our history is one of our most valuable assets and we must ensure that it is preserved and cherished. We must make sure that it is not diminished, watered down, and hidden from our children and all members of our community. I need for you to say these words with me. Three words. Share our history. Ready? Share, Share our history. history. Thank you. Thank you so much for uh, those words of encouragement uh, from our mayor, from Councilman Bailey. Thank you for substituting for uh, Councilwoman Herbert, uh, your rising star, into Ms. Murphy and to Ms. Glover. This time we will have the legacy observations uh, by the following Ms. Vivian uh, Counts. And following Ms. Counts, we will have legacy observations from Dr. Bobby Donaldson. Amen. Thank you so very much. Let me say again, good afternoon. And this really is a good afternoon. I'm so excited to talk a little bit about being one of the descendants of the business owners on the historic Black Wall Street, Black Business District of Columbia, Washington Street, of Washington Street. My name is Vivian Counts again. I'm the granddaughter of Dr. Durham Counts, who was a pharmacist at 1105 Washington Street. And I found out recently that he was a compounding pharmacist. These are the pharmacists that make their own medicine from natural resources which now I understand why I like to get into herbal medicine and all that kind of stuff. It's in my blood. But it was not only a pharmacy, but a restaurant, an ice cream parlor, a daycare center, a meeting place, and so much more. And it was also one of the businesses that was uh, listed in the historical green book for black folks to travel slave, um, safely through the South and places that they can go to get services in a segregated um, what I remember as a little girl was feeling so much empowerment seeing the hustling and bustle of beautiful African American people going up and down Washington Street, patronizing these businesses. It was a safe and protected environment. It was, it was magical. 
It was a monumental gateway for the visions of young people to dream of the possibilities of becoming successful African American men and women in business. And there are other black business districts in Columbia. They're around Allen and Benedict College, um, Greenview area. There were other black business districts. I want to thank Zion Baptist Church for your leadership in this endeavor, this historical event. And I also want to suggest that we make this day an annual celebration. We have to find ways to teach our young people about these business districts in Columbia, these black business dis uh, districts in Columbia, and to commemorate the successful, um, how would you say it, the successful impact it had on us knowing that we could do anything. A beautiful, strong impact on our communities. So let's make this day a celebration. Let's have a festival and a festival in honor of what happened on that Black Wall Street. And I'd also like to add before I leave that my grandmother Daisy Counts um, was an organist and pianist for this church for a few years. And so I got a kind of little history with that too. But uh, anyway, again, Zion Baptist Church, thank you for taking the lead on this. Thank you for all of the um, support from the community in this endeavor. And I have shared this with a lot of our family members about what was going on. So this means a lot to us. Um, thank you again, and enjoy this afternoon. Good afternoon, everyone. Good afternoon. To uh, Pastor Davis, to Ministers of the Gospel, to Mayor Rickman, city leaders, to Ms. Calvin Williams and the Zion Historical Committee, to all those who are from the city of Columbia, I have thoroughly enjoyed Black History Month, so much so that I've now lost my voice <laughs> on this Sunday. So I beg your forgiveness as I try to work through the assignment given to me by Sister Calvin Williams. Reverend Walters has lifted up an important scripture, and I was going to use that, Reverend Walters, but since you've already raised that to our attention, I would like to draw your attention to Philippians, the fourth chapter and the eighth verse, where Paul writes a letter to Philippi while in jail. Paul speaks all those years ago, not only to the Philippians, but to us, he says, finally, my brethren, whatsoever things are true, whatsoever things are honest, just, pure, love, whatsoever things are of good report, if there be any virtue, if there be any praise, I need you to think on these things. We gather today at the intersection of Gaston and Washington Streets, 801 Washington Street, to think on these things. To think on the stones that the builders rejected, that are today the chief cornerstones of our history. We gather to think on the lessons of Frederick Douglass, who said in 1888, the nation, the nation may forget its history. The nation may shut its eyes to the past. But black people, black people are bound to keep the memory of the past alive until justice is done. We gather today to think on these things. We gather today to think on that prophet, that prophet whose name was Dr. Carter G. Woodson. Mm. Dr. Woodson who said this, those who have no record of what their forebearers have accomplished wow. lose the inspiration which comes from a teaching of our history. We gather to think on these things. We gather to think on the lessons of another prophet whose name was Dr. Mary McLeod Bethune, who said in 1939, if our people are to fight their way out of bondage, we need to arm them 
with a sword and a shield, a belief in themselves and their possibility. We must teach our children their history from the cradle to the grave. We must do so at whatever cost, even if it breaks the very back of the kingdom. We gather today to think on the lesson shared with us by Judge Jasper Curate, mm. Judge Matthew J. Perry, Miss mm. Phyllis Davis, mm. Mother Gladys Gopal, mm. Mr. Rufus Ford, yes. my teacher, Miss Thomasina Briggs, yes. my teacher, Deacon John Bookhart, yes. and our teacher, Miss Kathy Hope. We gather today yes. to think on these things. We gather today to remember in 1866 when the Daily Phoenix newspaper spoke about black people who were dissatisfied with their worship experience at First Baptist Church. Mm. So they decided to remove themselves yeah. and to march down Washington Street toward the river. And Reverend Frank Dobbins and 72 men and 65 women gathered in the shadows of a home built by a man named Isom Mitchell. And on that corner, they erected an old wooden church that served as the meeting ground for black people across Columbia. But in 1916, the papers report about a new development on this corner. It said that the colored people of Columbia were seeking to build a Gothic building. It said the new building would be 130 feet long and 60 feet wide, 130 feet long, and 60 feet wide. No one even imagined or could envision that those struggling black people could build a cathedral, that they could build a monument on this corner. And here we are today to bear witness to what our people can do. It was in 1916, Reverend Davis, it said there was a cornerstone, these are the words, a cornerstone for the big Negro church. It said that day, the mayor of Columbia came. It said the lieutenant governor came. It said Dr. J.J. Durham, the leader of the state Baptist came. Mr. C.C. Johnson, the head of the ne Negro Masons, and it said this, the Negro house of worship is an evidence of a civic pride and a testimonial of religious zeal and loyalty. It said this church has been erected for $40,000, where the trustees, $40,000. personal sacrifice, which in the aggregate are immense. Mm -hmm. Through and by these sacrifices, our people have been well schooled in the practice of self-help and sturdy independence. When this building was erected, all around us were homes, yeah. businesses, institutions. Today, their parking lots, empty lots, hotels, police stations. So much has changed, and yet so much remains the same. So many of those places are long gone, but this old building still stands keeping watch. Today, this space and the markets are reminders to us that faith and history are the substance of things hoped for. Yeah. This moment is a reminder to us that our faith and our histories are the evidence of things not seen. Mm -hmm. Today we gather to build on the legacy of Carter G. Woodson, Frederick Douglass, and Dr. Mary McLeod Bethune. But we also build on the legacy of the men and the women who built this church, 
who traveled these corridors, who developed the Washington Street Business District. We gather today in their names. We gather today to remember those men and women who once said by and by when the morning comes. And all the saints shall gather home. What will they do? They will tell. They'll tell the story of how we've overcome. What will they do? They will tell the story that says God will make a way somehow. They will tell the story that says time is filled with swift transitions. Yes. Not on earth a move can stand, but we just build our hopes on things eternal. And we hold to God's unchanging hand. They will think on these things, and they will tell the story of the old woman and watch meeting service. The old woman who interrupted the program, Reverend Davis, she said, Brother Preacher, I've been walking for the Lord a long time. There's something about walking with him every day gets sweeter than the day before. He said, I don't mind the pitfall. Because every time I get to work, the Lord is right there. So I just, I just don't feel no waste time. I've come too far from where I started from. I don't feel no waste time. Come on, brother. I've come.
At this time, we will receive acknowledgments uh, from Mrs. Calvinetta Beasley Williams. Give her a hand as she comes. Because if not, we could not do what we're doing. So we want to thank him for all of his support. We just acknowledge the Black Business District's uh, members. Would the families, or any of those families here in the church, would you please stand? Did any one of those families come? I know it's on a Sunday, other than Mrs. Counts. Walters family, where's uh, that's 
your baby to the whole family. They go way back. That's why I think uh, Dr. Walters want to be a little bossy sometimes. That's okay. What about Deacon Cash's family? Deacon Cash. Oh, that's right, Kenzella. Go way back. Way back also. That was your grandfather, great grandfather. Grandfather. Go back to the beginning also. So we still keep the lineage going. We just want to mention those people that have that lineage. And we have special thanks to Deacon uh, Brown, where you Derek Brown. He did the buttons for us, and we want to thank him. And the slideshow that you saw, Dr. Pamela Weems, would you stand up, please? My daughter-in-law did that for us. Today. This is a great day for us, and I want to say we got one of the best mayors in the world. I don't know if he's going to be nominated. We have been so proud. We have been And thank you so much for making this a reality with us all. We know that you must be God seated, so we do pray for you, and thank you all very much. To God be the glory for all of the wonderful things he has done. Uh, in, the, in the book of Thessalonians, the fourth chapter, it says, Give thanks in everything, for this is the will of God. Just take a moment to express thanks and, and gratitude to uh, Miss Cavanetta Beasley Williams uh, for her leadership in making this all possible. And to the entire historical committee for what you have done to make this day possible. To Zion Baptist Church and the historical committee, would you please stand? I just want to acknowledge you and say thanks.